Teyvat and its surrounding nations are full of so many colorful characters, ranging from gods, elemental races and beings, to immortals and even mortal races. Every single one of them are loved and adored in the community for various reasons, be it lore, their looks and personality, or even for gameplay and meta. But regardless of your reasons on who you like or hate as characters, they all have unique stories and facts about them. So here is one fact about each of these characters we know so far in order of their elements. Before we begin though, if you enjoy Teyvat's facts and wisdom, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. After the video is over, join us over in our community discord server, where we talk all about Genshin including lore. Okay, with that said, let's open the Teyvatchinary and see what's been uncovered. Lumine in Ether Lumine's name might actually be a term from alchemy in Latin, Lumen de Lumine which means from light to light, and is an ancient form of prayer, and is even the name of an old, not very well-known alchemy book. Aether's name takes its origin from an ancient Greek primordial god of mythology by the same name. Aether, along with his sister, Hamera, were, depending on which version of the myth you read, either were the children of Nyx and Erebus, or Kronos and Anenki. Paimon in the Chinese dub of the game gets referred to by Star Snatcher as a talking fairy, which leaves her very confused. Sustainer is still a bit of an enigma, but she seems to quite possibly take inspiration from beings in mythology such as Nemesis. Nemesis was the god of revenge and punishment. Her job was to dish out divine retribution to all that would commit taboos or anger the gods, and, like Aether, was a child of Erebus and Nyx in Greek mythology. Dainsleaf is actually the name of a very deadly and dangerous sword in Norse mythology that belongs to this king. It was a sword crafted by the dwarves, but unfortunately it had to claim life every time it was drawn from its sheath. As mentioned here in this verse, from this part of the Old Norse legend, when offered compensation for his abducted daughter. Thou hast made this offer over late. If thou wouldst make peace, for now I have drawn Dainsleaf, which the dwarves made, and which must cause a man's death every time it is bared nor ever fails in its stroke. Moreover, the wounds heal not if one be stretched with it. Wonder if that was part of the inspiration for his curse. Guess we'll know in the future. While Sino isn't yet at the present date playable and not 100% certain if his vision is Pyro, Geo, Dendro, or Animo, there's no doubting his importance to the Sameru chapter. Sino, as mentioned in a previous video, takes heavy inspiration from Egyptian mythology, resembling jackals and the god Anubis. But did you know Anubis was not only the jackal god in Egyptians mythology? That's right, there were actually multiple, and some were hailed as local deities. But Anubis and these two gods were the most well known. Because I am terrible at pronunciation, we're just gonna call them W and D. While Anubis was the judge and protector of the afterlife, W acted as a guide and escort to the dead to reach their judgment. D himself, meanwhile, protected the bodies of the deceased along with his four brothers. Amber. Amber actually witnessed the events in the Favonius Knight's office years ago that led to D Luke leaving the Knights and giving up his vision willingly. This would make her one of the small handful that knows D Luke's reason for leaving the Knights, if not unintentionally. Bennett. Bennett's name derives from the Latin word Benedictus, which means blessed when translated to English. Maybe we can hopefully see some luck and he'll stop getting that rock tossed at him. Poor Benny. Diluc. The very first drink Diluc ever made was Grey Valley Sunset, a type of fruit punch. Sounds pretty good. His father, Crepus, told him to try making something after laying some ingredients out in front of him. With no requirements nor instructions, Diluc came up with this now popular fruit punch. Klee. Klee is mentioned in two furniture sets in the Serenity Pot, Favonius Ferdor and Blooming Hedge respectively. The Hedge in particular talking about how she loves to hide her precious treasures. Hu Tao. Silly churl, billy churl, silly billy hilly churl, woo. 
That was cringe, Tave. I'm gonna leave a dislike. Hey, you know what? I love you. Have a blessed day. Hutao's constellation resembles a butterfly. Butterflies in many cultures hold spiritual meanings, depending not only on their color, but differ between cultures. But typically, butterflies are said to be the souls of the dead coming to visit their loved ones, therefore being symbols of life and rebirth. Shinyan seems to actually be one of the small few that were not aware of what transpired during the Liyue Archon chapter, which she revealed during the Labyrinth Story Quest event that she was not in Liyue at the time. She did not know who Tartaglia actually was upon meeting him, with the Traveler in Paimon soon addressing him as brother throughout the event. Shanling Shanling's family-run restaurant is actually very famous across Teyvat. It is well known in Mondstadt, so it's surprising but also not that her famous cooking is known even by people overseas in Inazuma. Her cooking is even loved by the Geo Archon, the Adepti, and the Chising. Yenfei Yenfei is like Ganyu, a half-Adeptus. This much is well known, but as to what she is? It seems her father was actually a... Shiachu. If I mispronounce this, please don't cast her at me in the comments below. Or maybe a dragon like Zhang Li. Xiaqia aren't a well-known creature from Chinese mythology for many, but they had features resembling an ox or goat with draconic traits. They were also symbols of justice in China. Toma. Toma, much like Amber, is of mixed heritage, having Mondstadt and Inazuman parents. He ended up in Inazuma due to some unfortunate circumstances while trying to visit his Inazuman father. Yoimiya This beloved chatterbox of a firecracker was born on June 21st, making her fall under the sign of Cancer the Crab in the astrology zodiac. There's a stereotype involved with the Cancer's sign, which tends to be usually very good-natured, sensitive, and good listeners. Funny, considering just how much she loves to talk and be a social butterfly. La Signora. Signora's last name means blazing butterfly in German. Interesting considering her boss transformation has a heavy theme towards moths and butterflies. Barbara. Barbara as a singing idol is very popular, particularly in Mondstadt. If you use any of her attacks around an NPC, they will actually start applauding and cheering for Barbara. Mona. If you look closely at Mona's idol animations, it will randomly switch between Amber's, Jean's, and Lisa's constellations respectively. Fun fact, I also have not been able to pull Mona yet, so give me some luck. Xing Cho. Xing Cho, along with Albedo, actually published a book together called Legend of the Sword which, while not popular in Liyue, has gained rapid popularity and great reviews in Inazuma and even Fontaine. Tartaglia. Tartaglia is actually considered so dangerous that the other Fatui Harbingers are constantly trying to keep him far away from Shneznaya due to his battle-hungry tendencies. Kokomi Recently, we learned a lot about Kokomi and Watatsumi. If you look at Kokomi's kimono, you'll notice it has a striking similar color scheme to the Vishhat boss below Dainichi Makoshi. Ayato Ayato's constellation is called Cypressus Custos, which means Guardian Cypress in Latin. Cypress trees hold a strong symbolism towards grieving, the afterlife, and death. It is a very common tree to see in cemeteries across Western, European, and Muslim cultures. But it's not all tragic, as the cypress is also a symbol for hope and immortality for those mourning makes you wonder if he's still grieving his parents. Jean. Considering how busy and hardworking Jean is, it can be hard to get this girl to stop for even a coffee break. Jean's go-to drink actually is confirmed to be straight coffee, which we got to make her during the bartender event. Sucrose. If you talk to the NPC Tommy, it is revealed that Sucrose put out a commission to acquire material for her alchemy projects. Tommy ended up taking it due to being an admirer of her work, and hopes to become a long-term cooperative relationship with her should he complete the commission. Venti 
Venti's favorite flower is the Cecilia lilies. This reminds him not only of freedom, but his friends that died in the revolution. Cecilia means blind, and heavenly lily in Latin, depending how it's written. Shout. Shao is actually a bird yaksha adeptus, a vermilion bird to be more exact. I know what you're thinking, but he has no red nor is he pyro, so how is he a vermilion bird? The evidence is everywhere with him, from his constellation, his tattoo, and even how he jumps and plunges. He even was called the Golden Winged King as one of his aliases. Vermilion birds are often mistaken for a phoenix, but are actually quite different, often shown to have a very beautiful appearance and colorful feathers, just like a peacock in some variants in the media. They are also very particular about what they eat and where they perch. They are also one of five guardian beasts alongside an azure dragon, black tortoise with a snake, a white tiger, and the yellow dragon. Kazuha At present, sadly Kazuha is one of the only five stars to yet receive a character story quest along with Kuchin, Chichi, and Shinha. Quite unfortunate considering just how loved he is by everyone as a character, as a unit, and in lore. Maybe this will change in the future, as many at the present date of this video are hoping and praying for his first rerun for the event banner, including myself. Sayu There are very few people actually capable of finding Sayu while she's hiding. This list includes Yaimiko, Traveler, and the Kamisato siblings just to name a few. Others find it very tricky to find this small sleepy ninja otherwise. Razor Razor got his vision after being ambushed in attack by an abyss mage. His wolf family had rushed to help him, only to fail. In rage, Razor had broken free and received a vision of Electro, defeating the mage like some cornered beast on the hunt. It is a memory he wishes he could forget. Fischl Fischl and her raven Oz actually take some inspiration from the Norse god Odin from mythology. Odin in mythology sacrificed parts of himself to gain knowledge and enlightenment. Meanwhile, the raven is often a symbol of Odin and used as his familiars. Makes you wonder just how much this ultimate cosplayer really knows in reality. As in the Norse mythology, Odin was seen as being all seeing and knowing. Lisa. Lisa wears purple roses in her hair and clothes. This is quite significant as purple roses are called the mystical rose and are symbols of enchantment, majesty, and even love at first sight. Purple roses are quite rare also, and like other roses, their meaning varies with how light or dark their color is. Kutchin. The description on Unmoving Kingstone states there is an urban legend about her training in the martial arts, that it took her 10 years to complete and master under intense training. One states part of it was to constantly attack the Kingstone until it was as smooth as a mirror. Beto. Beto's birthday is actually on Valentine's Day, February 14th. Maybe that's why she's such a romantic at heart, on top of being one of Li Yue's most beloved gems, and seen so often with Ningguang as a popular shipping. Which, uh, I support by the way. Sara. Sara is actually not human. She's a type of yokai known as a Tengu. Tengu yokai came in many varieties, but were well known for their control over wind using their famous fans. Makes you wonder why she didn't end up Animo instead of Electro. It's rather interesting. Kind of makes me want to try out another what if idea. Yamiko. Yamiko was very close to a senior Kitsune of her clan, Urakusai, and was much like a grandfather figure to Yamiko, it seems. He would even give her shoulder rides when she was still such a tiny fox kid. How precious is that? It's such a shame we only got to meet him briefly when we lent ourselves to host his spirit briefly. A. A, as we know, was very close to Makoto, but the events of the Cataclysm left scars on A that ran down deep on an emotional and even mental level. To the point just talking about it with us left her visibly shaken and had come close to tears a few times during her quest. The loss of a loved one is never easy, so for her to deal with this for over half a millennia, it will take time to heal, one she is finally starting to step towards. Scaramouche Unlike the other Harbingers, Scaramouche does not wear a mask on his face, but on top of his hat. 
This might be a reference to the role in the Italian play Commedia dell'arte's actor Tiberio Florio, the role for Scaramouche, who played without a mask. Kaya. Kaya's vision is actually a bit different from others in Mondstadt. It's actually missing a pair of wings. This might be due to him having split loyalties and having a foot in two worlds, as they say. Rosaria. Kaya and Rosaria are actually close drinking buddies. They're often seen going to grab a drink at the bar together. Diona. Diona actually lives in Springville, Mondstadt, and is the daughter of Draff, a well-known hunter in Mondstadt. It is due to her father that she has such a dislike for alcoholic drinks. Eula. Eula actually ends up becoming far more open and less guarded while drunk. This is shown when she came in for a drink at the bartender event, sadly revealing she often has the drink alone due to her family's bad reputation. Chongyun. Chongyun actually has snake-like pupils, just like Sumi, Baiju, and Sino. This makes it rather suspicious, and points to him possibly being a Vishat person or a descendant of Orobashi's familiars. Ganyu. Ganyu is actually older than Yai, Miko, and Xiao, meaning she was born well before the Archon War. Unfortunately, we don't know much about her family beyond her parents being a human and Keeling Adeptus. Maybe we'll learn more in the future when she eventually gets part two to her story quest. Chi Chi. According to the Chinese version, Chi Chi and Kuching actually share the same martial artist fighting style known as Yun Lai swordsmanship, which is very ancient. Shen he. Due to her circumstances of her past in being raised by the Adepti, Shinha is not particularly fond of crowds. But the good news is, we can see as of Lantern Rite, that Shinha is finally starting to slowly mingle back into human society. But she has expressed a desire to enjoy more festivals together with her small circle of friends. Ayaka. Ayaka actually was taught the art of flower arranging. Japanese flower arranging is an ancient art known as ikibana, which means way of the flowers. It is a tradition that dates back to the Heian period in Japan, a time when flower offerings were common at altars and shrines. Tsuritsa, or the Cryo Archon. In Tartaglia's voice lines, he describes her as being very gentle, or rather she used to be. She sadly has hardened her heart to be as cold as ice, in fact, which is unfortunate. But what could cause the god of love to lose love for everything in the first place? That is a mystery and topic for another day. Albedo. Albedo is, as we know, one of gold's more perfected creations. This makes gold, in a sense, his mother, and Durin and Albedo, too, his brothers, along with any other of gold's creations as his family. That makes for one weird and freaky, brainy bunch photo, don't you think? Especially with there still being the second albedo still on the loose in Mondstadt as we speak. Noelle. Noelle actually got a very far-fetched tale spun about her by the storyteller in Liyue Harbor, which was rather humorous, but also rather embarrassing for poor Noelle. Hopefully her night exam will be this year and soon. Ningguang. Ningguang actually hails from a fishing and merchant family that were rather poor. She would often go out and fish, grabbing fish with her bare hands. Yunjin. Yun's family actually didn't always used to be in performing arts. They used to be very skilled blacksmiths. In fact, it was their family that created the Eye of Perception in its lore. Zhongli. Zhongli, jokes aside, isn't as broke as he appears. He has a steady job and is a consultant in very high demand. He just unfortunately keeps forgetting his wallet, which we've all done at some point, right? It's just unfortunately going to take time for him to learn to budget his mora and not forget his wallet at home. Goro. Goro is actually very close friends with Kazuha within the Sanganumiya resistance. He has been described to get along quite well with the soft-spoken wandering samurai. Ito. Ito is actually close friends with Ayato. He looks up to the Kamisato's clan, a lot in fact. He's one of the few Ito will actually listen to. Baiju. Baiju's name is actually the name of a real-life herbal plant known by the genius or the common name Baiju. Baiju was a common and ancient healing herb in Chinese medicine. Yayo. 
Yayo is described by many characters to be an energetic and sweet girl. Chi Chi describes her to be a lot like a finch when she gives people her puppy dog eyes, making it very hard for Beto and her crew to turn her away when on board, in fact. Kusanali. Kusanali's title of Lester Lord is an odd one in English translation because in Chinese, she's addressed as Little Lucky Grass Monarch, while in Korean, she's addressed as Kusanali Debbie, and in Japanese, is called Kuda Kusanari Debbie. Debbie is a Sanskrit word, meaning god or goddess, while the term Kuda may lean towards the Pali term Kuda, which means little or small. That about wraps it up for now, as there are many more characters out there, and more to come in the future. I look forward to meeting each and every one of them and the stories and secrets they have to share with us later down the road. But until then though, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. I'm going to close the Tevachinary, and with that said, I will see you in the future for more Genshin Impact content and lore.